In this package I supposed to have Mini ITX H6 and motherboard from Juan Andre. And this is actually the very first time Juan Andre decides to sponsor something on my channel. So for this motherboard I have paid only about 20 euros for shipping and taxes, but the motherboard itself is provided by Juan Andre. And I thank everyone who participated in my channel development, so now Juan Andre decided that they want to see my reviews of their products. So the packaging is extremely good, we have box inside the box and a double plastic wrap. So the box itself looks and feels extremely pleasant, we also have this 3-year uh, warranty print, I'm not sure if it is valid outside of China though, and we also see H610M ITX motherboard, it means that the box is no longer anonymous and passing all possible motherboards, so Juan Andre is definitely stepping up. Inside the box we also have very safe packaging, so the box itself is rather big and then inside the box we have this uh, thick plastic foam and I think they will be just fine uh, shipping the motherboard in this box wrapped in a plastic wrap because this foam is rather thick. The IO shield is now painted and it also feels a bit thicker than it used to be, but maybe it's just because of the paint. Here is the motherboard itself, but first let's see what we have uh, over here. So here we have just one SATA cable and this Juan Andre warranty card. As I have already said, uh, I don't think it is valid anywhere outside of China, or at least they do not have any representatives outside of China. So the warranty card is rather useless. But here we have this kind of extra carriage or box for the motherboard, and you can see that here is one layer and here is another layer. So the packaging is very safe and I'm very satisfied with it. Here is the motherboard itself. Uh, there is nothing spectacular about this particular motherboard. It's a typical mini ITX H610, but this one is made by Juan Andre. And what I can say is that this uh, VRM heatsinks feel very decent and they also don't wobble on the MOSFETs, so they are attached uh, very firmly. Here we also see that we have holes for LGA. Uh, 1151, 1150 or 1200 mounting as well as uh, LJ1700 mounting. We have M.2 slot over here which spans over this uh, chipset radiator which is both good that we have a M.2 slot and bad because it spans over the radiator uh, because some SSDs uh, they have memory chips on both sides and uh, those will not pass here because the memory chips under the SSD will touch this radiator. Over here we have a 4-pin uh, fan header and uh, the audio header. On this side we have the standard uh, home port, I believe this is. Then this will be USB and this is the front panel I.O. and USB 3. Also fourth SATA ports, I believe these are SATA 3 ports and not SATA 2 ports. Of course we have the 24 and 8 pin power connectors, two memory slots and I think this is first time ever I see Chinese manufacturers use these single side clicked uh, memory slots. I don't like these memory slots but it is what it is, like they do their job, it's just I don't like them. So on this side you can open it, on this side you cannot open it. Of course we also have a PCI Express X16 slot. And for the rear side I.O. we have simple audio output, we have Wi-Fi antenna output, but it's important to mention that the M.2 Wi-Fi module is not present, you would have to install it yourself if you want Wi-Fi. Then we have two USB 2 Ethernet port, two USB 3, then we also have some white USB port, I'm not sure. Maybe this motherboard supports a BIOS flashback from the USB drive, uh, I will have to check it with Juan Andrew. Then we also have uh, HDMI and DisplayPort and VGA for legacy support. 
On the other side of the motherboard, we don't have anything. Sometimes Mini ITX motherboards have an additional M.2 slot on the other side of the motherboard, but I assume this would increase the production cost and Honancher doesn't want that. What I have also spotted is that over here we have a buzzer or a speaker that's probably gonna be shit annoying, but it is what it is. And here is another 4-pin fan header. This one is probably for the CPU and this one is for the chassis. So let me open the CPU socket and see if we have any damaged CPU pins. So the CPU socket looks to be perfectly fine. I don't see any damages, at least I don't see any damages right now. Maybe later on when I will watch the video I will spot some damages, but as of right now what I can see is that the socket is perfectly fine and not a single pin damaged, so I have a hope that the motherboard works just as it should. I plan to review this motherboard with my Core i7-12700K CPU and also will try it with the i3-12100 or maybe I will find myself an i5-13400 to validate if the motherboard takes 13 generation CPUs. Anyway, if you're interested in the full detailed review of this Honan Jury H610M ITX motherboard, then please follow me on my main YouTube channel. The video review will be published there.